The Jack Benny Program, transcribed and presented by Lucky Strike. Nothing, no nothing, beats better taste. Lucky's taste better. Cleaner, fresher, smoother. Lucky's taste better. Cleaner, fresher, smoother. Remember that, friends, for real smoking enjoyment, nothing, no nothing beats better taste. And Lucky's taste better, cleaner, fresher, smoother. I'd like to explain just why that is. So let's start where Lucky's do, with good tasting tobacco. You just have to have Lucky's fine, light, naturally mild tobacco to begin with, or you'll never wind up with Lucky's better taste. And friends, remember this, Lucky's are made better to taste better, to taste cleaner, fresher, and smoother. That's the secret of real smoking enjoyment. Lucky's fine tobacco in a cigarette that's made better to taste better, to give you a cleaner, fresher, smoother tasting smoke. So be happy, go lucky, and get the better taste you're entitled to. When you stop at a cigarette counter, stop and consider this. Nothing, no nothing, beats better taste. Lucky's taste better. Cleaner, fresher, smoother. Lucky's taste better. Cleaner, fresher, smoother. For lucky strike means fine tobacco, richer tasting. Fine tobacco. Lucky's taste better. Cleaner, fresher, smoother. Lucky strike. Lucky strike. Lucky Strike program starring Jack Benny with Mary Livingston, Rochester, Dennis Day, Bob Crosby, the Sportsman Quartet, and yours truly, Don Hope. <laughs> and now, ladies and gentlemen, let's go out to Jack Benny's house in Beverly Hills. And even though this is only the first week in December, Jack is preparing to mail his Christmas cards early. Well, let me see, Rochester. Who else do I want to send a Christmas card to? Oh, yes, put down Joan Crawford, Barbara Stanwy. A little slow, boss. I can't write that fast. Oh, oh, I'm sorry. Joan Crawford. Barbara Stanwy. Barbara Stanwyck. Yasha Heifetz. Yasha Boss, do you send a Christmas card to Yasha Harpitz? Well, certainly. After all, we have a lot in common. You know, as a matter of fact, last year, Mr. Heifetz sent me a string off the violin he used when he gave a concert in Carnegie Hall. Oh, yeah, I remember. By the way, Rochester, what did I do with that string? You put it in your pajamas. <laughs> oh, yes. Tonight, remind me to put some rosin on it, the knot slip. <laughs> Now, let... Hey, wait a minute. If the violin string is in my pajamas, where's the pajama string? On your violin. <laughs> oh, yes. Now, let's uh, get on with this list. Oh, there's one Christmas card I must send out to General Eisenhower. Do you know his address? Uh, no. Oh, I know. I'll address the envelope this way. General Dwight D. Eisenhower, Washington, D.C. Care of Harry Truman, please hold. <laughs> I'll send one to President Truman, too. Mark that one, please, forward. <laughs> now, let's see. Who else should I... Rochester, was that the front door buzzer? Yes, sir. There it goes again. <laughs> well, go answer it. Oh, 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 that's right. You made the beds this morning. <laughs> Yes, yes, I did. It's your turn. Answer the door now. Yes, sir. Coming! Oh, hello, Miss Livingston. Hello, Mr. Crosby. Hello, Hi, Rochester. Mr. Benny in? Oh, yes. He's in the den. He's been working all day addressing Christmas cards. He sold that many, huh? Oh, these are his personal cards. <laughs> the ones he's sending to his friends. Uh, am I on the list? Oh, yes, Miss Livingston. And next to your name is a notation. Wristwatch. Hmm, a wristwatch, huh? And, uh, next to Mr. Crosby's name is Gold Cufflinks. Hey, Mary, isn't that wonderful? A wristwatch next to your name and Gold Cufflinks next to mine. Bob, don't get excited. Jack is just trying to guess what he's going to get from us. <laughs> well, that old blue-eyed fox. 
airport. Come on, Bob. Let's go in the den. Okay. Hello, Jack. Huh? Oh, hello, Mary. Hi, Jack. Hello, couplings. I mean, hello. <laughs> what are you doing? Oh, I'm addressing some Christmas cards. Mary, do you think I ought to send a card? Mary, do you think I ought to send a card? Jack, that's the door buzzer. So what? I made the beds this morning. <laughs> Rochester. Oh, yes. Come in. Well, I could have done that. Hey, where is everybody? In here, Dennis, in the den. Oh. Hello, Mr. Benny. Hello, Mary. Hello, Bob. Hello, Dennis. Hiya, kid. Oh, hello, Dennis. Hey, Mr. Benny, I got a big surprise for you. A surprise? Yeah, I don't know whether you know it or not, Mr. Benny, but I'm a member of the Elks Club. Oh, oh, I know that. Yeah. And every year we give an award to the one whom we select as the outstanding personality on radio and television. Well. And <laughs> since I was the one who nominated you and campaigned for you, I felt that I should be the one to come over here and tell you. Well, certainly. You lost. <laughs> I lost? But believe me, Mr. Benny, the way it turned out, you don't have to feel bad. I don't? Nah, you didn't even come close. <laughs> <laughs> hmm. But you got one vote. Well, thanks anyway, kid. Don't thank me. I voted for Chef Milani. <laughs> Dennis, for heaven's sake, if you nominated me and campaigned for me, why did you vote for Chef Milani? I thought it was time for a change. <laughs> I can't understand at all. Look, Dennis, I'll bet you came over here and made that whole thing up. You don't even belong to the Elks. Oh, yes, I do, Mr. Benny, and they told me I'm one of the most important members they've got. A silly kid like you? Why would you be even important to the Elks? Well, every time they take in a new member, they pull out one of my teeth. <laughs> now, cut that out! <laughs> Dennis, I don't want any more trouble from you. Just let me hear the song you're going to do on the program. Okay, but I might whistle a little. A new member joined today. <laughs> All right, whistle, but do it. Let's hear the song. The holly green, the ivy green, the prettiest picture you've ever seen is Christmas in Killarney with all of the folks at home. It's nice to know to kiss your bow while cuddling under the mistletoe. And Santa Claus, you know, of course, is one of the boys from home. The door is always open, the neighbors pay a call. And Father John, before he's gone, will bless the house and all. How grand it feels to click your heels and join in the fun of the jigs and reels. I'm handing you no Barney, the likes you've never known. It's Christmas in Killarney with all of the folks at home. The holly green, the ivy green, the prettiest picture you've ever seen. It's Christmas in Killarney with all of the folks at home. It was Cousin O'Flaherty, Uncle O'Shaughnessy, Michael, me brother, and Auntie McGee, and Father and Mother were all in a dither when Terence the baby crawled under the tree. It's nice, you know, to kiss your hoe while cuddling under the mistletoe. And Santa Claus, you know, of course, is one of the boys from home. It was Paddy Delahanty who dressed up like Santy and gave out the presents like he always does. But Johnny McGee, when he sat on his knee, tried to pull off his whiskers to see who it was. The door is always open, the neighbors pay a call. And Father John before he's gone we'll bless the house and all how grand it feels to click your heels and join in the fun of the jigs and reels i'm handing you no barney the likes you've never known it's christmas in Killarney with all, all of the folks at home Very good. It'll be fine on the program, kid. Don't call me kid. <laughs> what? I've been with you 12 years and you keep calling me kid. Well, what do you want me to call you? Mr. Day. 
You want me to call you Mr. Day? Yeah, that's what my mother calls my father Well, that's ridiculous Why would your mother call your father Mr.? Well, since I was born, there haven't been such good friends <laughs> can understand. Sometimes I... Come in! Oh, hello, Don. Well, hi, kids. Hi, hi Don. Don. Say, Don, where were you last night? Why? What do you mean? Well, you should have been with us. Gee, Jack took us all to the movies. We went to Pantages to see the happy time. That's right, Don. I treated the gang to dinner and everything. Dinner, too? Gosh, where'd you eat? In the theater. He bought us popcorn. <laughs> Oh, stop. I suppose you think they give you those candy bars. There. <laughs> Did you like the happy time? Uh-huh. You know, Don, in fact, I liked it so much, I think we may do a sketch about it on our program. Well, Jack, do you think that our cast will fit the characters in the picture? Oh, they'd be marvelous, Don. You see, the leading role in the happy time is played by Charles Boyer. Oh, and he was just wonderful. That's right. You see, Don, in this picture, Charles Boyer is the father of a family. He's in show business and plays the violin. Come to think of it, I, I probably would have fit the part much better than he did. <laughs> I wonder why they didn't call me when they were casting the picture. Well, maybe they didn't know you were available, Jack. He's been available since the horn blows at midnight. <laughs> <laughs> I've had offers since then, sister. As a matter of fact, I played a small but very important part in a picture called Somebody Loves Me. It's the life story of Blossom Seeley and Benny Fields. Oh, I saw that picture, Mr. Benny. You appeared as yourself, didn't you? Yes, Dennis. I played the part of Jack Benny. I thought it was lousy casting. <laughs> here is bad. I don't know where he put lousy. In. <laughs> he puts in anything he wants. working for me. I'm working for him. <laughs> Dennis, one more crack like that, I'm going to join the Elks. You'll be in now, what were we talking about? The happy time. You said you wanted to do it on radio. Oh, yes. Now, Don, Boyer's wife in the picture could be Mary, and they had a 12-year-old son who was very much like Dennis. I'm older than that. <laughs> Physically, yes. <laughs> Now, Don, there were all sorts of wonderful characters in The Happy Time, including Uncle Louie, an eccentric who always goes around drinking from a water cooler filled with wine. Bob, do you think you could play that part? Well, I don't know, Jack. You see, I don't drink. But, Bob, this is only wine. Yeah, but you can get stinking on that stuff, too. <laughs> I guess so. Don't forget, he's a Frenchman, too. He plays a Frenchman. Well, Bob, play that part anyway, but don't overact, will you? Oh, the characters sound fine, but what about the story? Would that be appropriate for a sketch? Oh, the story would be perfect, Don. You see, the happy time takes place in the year 1924 in Ottawa, Canada. The scene is the home of Jacques Bonnard and his family. The story opens one day with Jack practicing his violin. What is it, Marie? Uh, your, your violin. Why are you practicing it? I thought you woke with up with the headache. That is right, mon chéri. But the headache is all gone. I feel better. <laughs> Good. What did you take for it? An Alka-Seltzer. <laughs> Listen to him fizz. <laughs> It is driving me crazy. But, darling, if I do not practice, I will not be able to complete the symphony I am working on. I'm going to call it Can vous dites, je suis affliché, d'un j'y reviendrai à toi. Oh, 
what a lovely title. When you say I beg your pardon, then I to you will come back. <laughs> What is wrong with this violin? Your pajama string, she is out of tune. <laughs> By the way, Marie, where is Grandpapa? Your papa, he is sleeping late. He was out all night again. Oh. Ah, oh, here he is now. Good morning, Papa. You were out late again last night, were you not? Wee oui, wee. Oui. <laughs> you were out with a girl? Wee oui, wee. Oui. Was she pretty? Wee oui, wee. Oui. What was her name? Fee Fee. <laughs> Fee Fee? Wee oui, wee. Oui. <laughs> well, Papa, I think tonight for once you do not go out. You go to sleep early. But no, I must go out tonight. My girlfriend is giving me a birthday party. Oh, that is right. This is your birthday. How old are you, Papa? Thirty-nine. <laughs> oh, yeah. Uh, wait a minute, Jacques. How old are you? Thirty-nine. Jacques, how can you and your Papa both be thirty-nine? You are right, Marie. It is ridiculous for Papa to say he is thirty-nine. I will talk to him. Papa, dites-moi. Pourquoi nous sommes si égaux même? Oh, mon fils, je rive la première île et l'oulmier. Oh. What did Papa say? He said he got there first. It is his. <laughs> well, au revoir. I have to be going. Uh, goodbye, Papa. Uh, don't stay out too late. Sing that same song. It is a new number we are going to do in the theater. A solo? No, not exactly. You see, I start on the violin, then a quartet joins in, and uh, Marie, it will sound something like this. Ah, oh, here is Uncle Louis. Hello, Jacques. Hello, Marie. Oh, what a day. Where can I put my cooler of wine? <laughs> he used to speak French good, but he spent Christmas in Killarney. <laughs> Fine Frenchman, we got him. Louis, I am curious. For years I have seen you carry that cooler around. 
Tell me, what kind of wine do you keep in it? Monet. Monet Bordeaux? Monet Chevrolet. <laughs> Chevrolet? try to change? Why do you associate with people like, like that guitar player? You mean Francois Remley? <laughs> yes, that Francois Remley. That fellow is one of the worst. Wait, wait a minute, Jacques. Francois Remley is not as bad as you think. In fact, he is quite the gentleman. What do you mean, Mo Cherie? Well, yesterday after the rain, there was a big puddle of water on the boulevard. And so that I would not get my feet wet, <laughs> Monsieur Remley let me step on his coat. He did not let you. He just happened to be lying there. <laughs> Tomorrow, it could be Monsieur Bagby. <laughs> so do not think that... Ah, our son, Denise, is home, is home from school. Hello, Mama. Hello, Papa. Hello, Uncle Louis. <laughs> Hello, my son. Hello, Denise. How did you do with your studies today, Denise? Well... Jacques, you do not have to worry about how our son does in school. He is, as the Americans say, pretty sharp. Marie, mon chéri, it does not necessarily mean a boy is sharp because his head had come to a point. <laughs> he is, as the American also say, a jerk. <laughs> Merci beaucoup, papa. You are welcome. I am going to my room. I am making a handkerchief box for Mignonette. Ho, oh, ho, oh, the little boy is in love with the maid. Denise in love with our maid? Is this true? Yes, Mama. But, son, you cannot be in love with the maid. You are only 12. Mentally, yes. <laughs> I think you should have a talk with the maid. Very well. Where is Mignonette? She's in the kitchen. I will go see her. Excuse me. Imagine my little boy, Denise, in love with the maid. Well, I cannot blame Denise for being in love with Mignonette. She is not an ordinary maid. She used to be a dancer in the theater. Oh. Hello, Monsieur Bonard. Mignonette, put down those fans and get off the ironing board. <laughs> I wish to talk to you about my son, Denis. Mm, it is about time, monsieur. You know, he has the puppy love crush on me. Oh, I do not know why. I only kissed him once. Wait a minute, Mignonette. If you kiss the boy, then you encourage him. Oh, no, monsieur. It was not a real kiss. It was just a little one. Like this. Here, I will show you. <laughs> Not much. Mm, no, no, it was nothing. <laughs> Help me down off the ironing. <laughs> Thank you. Mignonette, I do not know what to do about my son. Monsieur Bonnard, your Denise is growing up. You should have a talk with him and tell him the facts of life. You are right. I shall go to his room and... Oh, there's no need to go. Here he is now. Hello, Mignonette. Hello, Papa. <laughs> Denis, your father wishes to talk with you. I shall leave you two alone. Now, Denise, 
I wish to have a talk with you. Mignonette told me that you kissed her. That is right, Papa. <laughs> Denise, my boy, there are some things you should know about life. Yes, Papa. There comes a time in a father's life when he must have a man-to-man -man talk with his son. What is it, Papa? I will explain. When I was a young man, I met your mama. I asked her to go out with me. I courted her. I got a job. She waited for me. I worked till I could afford a diamond ring. Then I proposed to her. She accepted me. Then we were married. And then you got me. Yes. <laughs> it was hardly worth it. <laughs> but this is the way it is with love, son. Even with the birds and the bees. I think I understand, Papa. Good. Now go outside and play. Yes, Papa. Well, I am glad that he's over. He is so young, impressionable. I am glad I was able to make him understand. He is a good boy. And someday... Papa! Papa! Denise, my boy, what is the matter? Your lips are all swollen. You and your crazy bees. <laughs> to my son, Danny. <laughs> Friends, last year, more than a quarter of a million homes were ravaged by a fire. Thousands of Americans lost their lives. And most of these fires were caused by someone's carelessness. So be extremely careful with fire. Replace all defective electrical wiring in your home. Don't smoke in bed. And be sure that every match or cigarette is out. Remember, only you can prevent fires. Thank you. Jack will be back in just a moment. But first, nothing, no nothing beats better taste. Lucky's tastes better. Cleaner, fresher, smoother. Lucky's tastes better. Cleaner, fresher, smoother. Yes, when it comes to your own enjoyment of a cigarette, nothing, no nothing beats better taste. And Lucky's tastes better. Cleaner, fresher, smoother. You can prove that yourself when you smoke Lucky's. Or you can ask any Lucky smoker. Or take college students from coast to coast. A nationwide survey in 80 leading colleges based on actual student interviews reveals that far more smokers in these colleges prefer Lucky's than any other cigarette. And that's by a wide margin. What's more, Lucky Strike gained far more smokers in these colleges than the nation's two other principal brands combined. And the number one reason the students gave for smoking Lucky's was better taste. Yes, indeed. And because Lucky's do taste better, they'll make a wonderful gift for all the smokers on your Christmas list. Besides, you can now get Lucky's in their bright and cheery new Christmas carton created by Raymond Loy, the world-famous designer. You'll find it at any cigarette counter. So make it a lucky Christmas. Give everyone a colorful Christmas carton of Lucky Strike. Be happy, go lucky. Be happy, get better taste. Be happy, go lucky for Christmas gifts this year. Don, Don, that will give you a rough idea of the picture, the happy time. But you ought to see it. You'll enjoy it. There are a lot of characters that I, I didn't tell you. Where's the phone? I'll get it. Hello? Yes, he's here. You want to talk to him? What? Yes. Yes, I'll give him the message. Goodbye. Dennis? Yes, Papa? <laughs> On the way to your Elks meeting tonight, get some Novocaine. A new member just joined. <laughs> Good night, folks. Jack Benny program is written by Sam Perrin, Milt Josephsberg, George Balzer, John Packerberry, and produced and transcribed by Hilliard Mark. Jack Benny program is brought to you by Lucky Strike, product of the American Tobacco Company, America's leading manufacturer of cigarettes. Stay tuned for Anderson and Andy, who follow immediately on the CBS Radio Network.